And I actually really wanted to work for UN and do environmental policy making and change the world that way. Mm -hmm. But spending three years at the London School of Economics, I realized I didn't want to bump heads with the business owners and the politicians who really didn't have much regard for the environment that had different values to me. So I decided to come live on Maui day after I graduated where aloha was more important than money. Mm. And living here has been phenomenal, but there's still that part of me that really wanted to educate and inform and know that the environment and living here and how we treat the planet, how we treat ourselves is really important. A key thing I learned with my degree was you, if you can't change the policies, which is sometimes hard to do, and if you can't change the business executives' minds on what they're doing, you can change the way people consume if you educate them. Like you can change, you can paradigm shift. If someone is educated, if they know better, they do better. That's mm -hmm. what I truly believe. So when I had my child here, I'd been here 10 years, I um, had my little one, but none of my friends had babies, and I was kind of clueless, families don't live here, so I created this magazine to help mothers and to inform mothers because we are the ones who are raising the next generation. So if I can help teach this mom or inform this mom to be aware or more conscious of what they're doing and how they're affecting themselves, the environment, their children, then we can really shift the consciousness of the planet. I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but yeah. it works. That's so true. that's what I'm doing. So you still are using what you learned with your degree. You're just doing it with, through the moms and not the politicians. In, exactly. Instead of going top down, I'm going bottom up. So what are you seeing right now in Maui with the impact of a thousand test plots mm. here for GMO farming? What are you seeing? So when the GMO movement stepped up and um, we became very aware of what was going on in the open air GMO experimental field, a lot of moms started contacting me. And uh, moms were contacting me saying, I'm getting headaches, I'm getting sore throats. I had no idea. I live in North Kihei. A um, mom would contact me from Kauai. I want to write an article where it is a side effect of atrazine that uh, in womb, the baby will then be born with their intestines outside their body. She contacted me and wrote an article about it, wanted to inform other moms that this was happening. And she explained that her neighbor also had the same thing. So when that article came out, then other fa families came forward saying, yep, yeah, we have a child that's going to be born with gastroesthesis. We need help because there's not the medical facilities here. Can you help a fundraiser? And then because I'm connected with a lot of child agencies here, I have a good friend that works for the March of Dimes and I'm talking to her about it. Hey, these people are contacting me. And she said, yeah, it's really sad, Kate. Gastroesthesis, which was a rare disease, is now common in Hawaii. So as well as giving this voice and educating, I'm also a receptor of information of what's actually going down on the ground level and I'm informed of what's happening and how these, these chemical tests are affecting the mothers and the children and pregnant women. Is this gastroesthesis? Um, where the intestines are, are, the baby's born with the intestines outside of the body, is yeah. this life-threatening? Yeah, it can be, for sure. And then okay. it takes multiple um, operations to help this child. Yeah, it's totally life-threatening. My understanding is that a lot of these children are sent to Arizona or yeah. some, some place in the state, so it's not actually recorded to be a birth defect here oh. in Hawaii, and so huh. they can't actually track the increase of the birth defects. Um, is that, do you know anything I about that? I do not, but that wouldn't okay. surprise me. Right. Yeah. So is there a way for mothers to actually track these types of increases of health issues? I don't think there is. Um, when this whole movement happened, so I work with a lot of different departments, and I work with WIC, Women, Infant, and Children, the nurse and supervisor of the Department of Health in the Maui Family Health Services section, she actually contacted me. And she said, there isn't a way that we can record things, but pediatricians are noticing that the, there's, there's a correlation. There's an increase in children being sick in certain areas. So that's actually a really good video on YouTube um, made by a pediatrician in Kauai who stepped forward. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Evslin, he's been a pediatrician on Kauai for 34 years. And he totally believes there's a link between the pesticides and childhood diseases and what they experienced on Kauai. I strongly believe that if they did talk to the pediatricians here on Maui, they would find a link of children with respiratory um, diseases here in Kihei with this brain. 
Right, and one of those articles mentioned that they saw an increase of birth defects by 10 times the numbers that's uh, I read that normal, article too. Normal. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And what do you tell the mothers when they come to you and say, we're having these health issues? How do you bring hope and empowerment? Well, I give them a voice for a start. I let them share their story. I let them tell the world what is happening to them. I, I don't think you can turn a blind eye to it if you're actually reading someone's story. Like they're, they're not making it up. This is really happening to them. And it just can't be ignored if the stories keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. So I give them encouragement, like we have a voice, we're doing this, we just got to keep persistent and don't don't give up. You mentioned gastroschisis uh -huh. as an increased um, yeah. uh, um, effect, possibly now common, now common, um, possibly because of the exposure to these toxic yeah. chemicals. Uh, what other types of health effects are your mothers reporting to you? Well, for example, the mom is in Kihei with the respiratory, with the coughs, with the headaches, with the sore throats. Mm -hmm. You know, it's difficult to what to contribute that to. We do have VOG. We have the cane burning. Mm -hmm. We have the pesticide drift. There's so many different environmental impacts. It would be great to get testing so we could find out what it is. I used to do a keiki play morning up country in Wailuku and in Kula. And there was definitely more kids getting sick in the Kihei area with the Monsanto open air GMO testing fields are. Right. There was little kids with autoimmune diseases. Like I hadn't seen that anywhere else, but they, they were popping up in Kihei. Now, something's going on. Yeah. Like I, I'm a voice and I'm hearing all this information. It's being collected from all over the island. What do the doctors of these mothers say to them about these health effects? They say it's environmental with one, one mother who had a child with seizures mm -hmm. uh, living in North Kihei. He said, it, it, it's environmental. You probably should move. She moved. The kid didn't have a seizure again. Mm. With the respiratory, they give them inhalers. You know, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily. They tell the, the mothers that they're seeing an increase in these kind of things, mm -hmm. that it's now becoming common. So I, I sometimes wonder why the pediatricians aren't standing up and saying something, because they're obviously seeing this influx. But I don't hear from the pediatricians who could totally contact the magazine and say something, but right. at least I'm hearing from the moms who are just scrambling anywhere to find a voice that can anyone hear me like this is happening. Has anybody asked the pediatricians exactly what the numbers are of increase of allergies no. and autism and autoimmune issues and Have, things like that? For some reason it's weird how they keep their records or it's not kept, they don't keep the records. It's, it baffles me. They just don't have the records. Yeah. But at least the pediatrician in Kauai stepped up and said, I am seeing this pattern, something has to be done. <sighs> yeah. It must be very frustrating to you as a mother to see these reports of health issues and no solution or no action being taken on behalf of, of these children. Yeah, it is frustrating. It, the, the only thing I can do is give them a voice and make the community aware. Because the more aware we are, the more conscious we are then we can try and do something about it. I think, I think that's the only way at this point it's gonna happen because we've seen how talking to the big corporations or policy making or how politics is done in America and the rest of the world is influenced by other forces. Now, has your community asked them to stop spraying? Yes. And what did they say? No. And you passed the Maui ban. We the moratorium, actually it was the Monsanto that called it the farming ban. It wasn't a farming ban. It was actually a, a halt on your spraying so you can do environmental impact assessment. So we can find out whether it, it is affecting the soil and the water and the air and our children. So which, it was a temporary ban. Exactly. And, and, they, and that didn't No, pass. they flat out said no. And they flat out span it in the media, which was a huge eye opener for a lot of us, how they could blatantly put adverts saying, these people want a ban on the farming, which was so blatantly not what we wanted. We just wanted to have an environmental impact assessment. It just seems common sense that hasn't been done because the economic costs, like, I just believe that the opportunity cost of making billions of money outweighs maybe affecting a community. What's amazing to me is that we as mothers um, trust our instincts that the that harm can be happening to our child because of a certain reason and yet many of us are very hesitant to say this is the reason yeah. because we, you don't have doctors that agree with you and you don't have scientific studies so we have to be careful about how we say that but 
some of the moms are taking actions. What, what type of actions yeah. are some of the moms taking? Yeah, some of the moms are becoming empowered mm -hmm. because, you know, we're moms and when we think something is affecting our children, we, we will stand up. Mm -hmm. So one mommy, she jumped the fence of the Monsanto fields and she took a picture of the chemicals and what they were spraying because we did not know what chemicals they were spraying. They don't disclose they it. And they won't disclose yeah. it. Yeah. So she took a picture, she went home and she researched all the different chemicals that were on the sheet that got signed, how many times it had been sprayed, where it was. And it was amazing. Every single chemical that was, that was on there was either banned in the EU, was carcinogenic, had different side effects, you know, uh, were concerned for pregnant women. And it was amazing that she did that because then we knew, then we knew what we kind of were dealing with. And then the only thing I could do was then publish that. Well, these are the chemicals, these are the side effects. These are how they're getting um, combined. We have no idea whether they've tested the combinations, whether this is safe for us. We have no idea whether the amounts of these chemicals, how they've tested on the effect of little children, of babies. Well, it's common practice mothers. for them to not test the combinations. The EPA's uh -huh. uh, policy is to test the one active chemical ingredient in, for instance, a product like Roundup, which mm -hmm. has many different chemicals. Yeah. So it's not actually even a fair assessment to say that a, a product is safe when you don't test all of the no. chemicals. Would you agree? I would totally agree. Uh, just from what I know from my, yeah, from my degree, my own research, yes, absolutely, 100%. So it, it's up to us to educate ourselves. Now you said that, some, that most of or all of the chemicals were banned in the EU. And it's, mm -hmm. it's important to note that the largest pesticide producer in the world is Syngenta, uh -huh. which is based in Switzerland. Yeah. And do they allow these chemicals to be sprayed in Switzerland? No. No, they don't. Yeah. In fact, yeah. there's a lot of chemicals that are banned around the world that are sprayed in the United States of America. So they're sprayed here in Hawaii, but they're banned in many other countries around the world. Yeah. And as a Hawaii resident, how do you feel about that? You know what, coming from England, coming into America, maybe I have to believe it. Yeah, it's, it's truly sad that profits are put before the cakey. It's truly sad that profits are put before an amazing community in Ireland. I understand that here we have good weather all year round. I understand that the testing here, they believe will help them and they believe that these seeds will help all around the world. But they do not understand or respect Hawaii. They don't understand and respect our children. They just don't know. Otherwise, if they knew, they wouldn't be doing it. Obviously, we want businesses to thrive. Obviously, we want farming to thrive. Obviously, we want businesses that claim to help world hunger to thrive. Why would we be against that? The only reason we, we would have our concerns if it, it is affecting what we love and what we cherish and what we respect. Yeah. Okay, you bring up an interesting point that the mothers have suspicions that these products are connected to their children's health issues and yet Monsanto and these chemical companies don't investigate it. Yeah. So the, your community has never been visited by say a, a health worker from Not Monsanto that I know of. to see if yeah. these could actually be connected and to interview you. That yeah. would be an interesting invitation Wouldn't it? to the chemical companies yeah. to have them come out and listen to a bunch of moms who live near these fields. Yeah. From how we've been treated or the community has been disrespected or at least just not heard. I gotta believe they just don't really care. Well, in the end, it's not good business. No. Because it's, it's, it's not... It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable to, yeah, to, exactly. to impact and to harm life and to think that you can continue profiting exactly. from it. Exactly. You know, the one major thing I learned with my degree was if, you can, if we can talk to the, the companies in their language, mm -hmm it's the best way we can do to see changes. So if we can talk to them more to do with profits than to do with how they're affecting the environment or how they're affecting our children's health or our pregnant mothers or the babies that are, are being born, if we can change the dialogue and be like, this is damaging, the PR, this, this will affect your bottom line, I think that's the only way they're gonna listen, unfortunately, from okay. my experience. Thank <laughs> you for giving the moms a voice. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.